Welcome everybody to Takis McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. I'm Tim Takis, and in today's show we're ta talking about the consequences of caregiving, loss of productivity in the workplace, uh, the financial health of the caregiver, all of those sorts of things. And I'm Mar Barbara McGinnis. In this segment, we have two guests, Jennifer Abernathy, who is from the, oh, she's actually the executive director, not just from the Tennessee Respite Coalition. And with us also is Mary Ann Oglesby Southerly, who's the executive director of the Miranda. So we're really going to spend some time talking about um, resources mm -hmm. for the caregivers in the community. Mm -hmm. So a little bit, not just defining the problem, but how are we gonna fix it? Jennifer, tell mm -hmm. us about respite. Well, respite is really the gift of time for family caregivers. It is the time that they can use to take care of themselves, go to the doctor's appointments that they've been missing, um, take that uninterrupted nap, uh, visit with friends so they don't lose that identity that we heard about earlier. Okay. Um, and it's, it's just so important because the the time is the key piece for that um, because we all know if you're working and being a caregiver time is the most important factor well it sounds like to right. me that you're talking about a fantasy world uh, yeah. <laughs> so what is respite I, I, I what, I what actually is respite um, you um, know well, it sounds like someone like whisk you away yeah, and you know, whatever yeah, it is no, but that's no. not really what it is no so. no Re respite can be time that you have someone else caring for your loved one whether that be in your home or out at a facility or overnight in overnight care um, it you know whatever gets that caregiver the time that they need so respite mm -hmm. can be intermittent yep it, it can be uh, a brief period of time like yep. four hours a day yep a short-term break it could be a vacation mm -hmm. covering caregiving for a vacation yes it could take place in the seniors home mm -hmm. or it might be moving to a facility on a temporary basis while while you're out of town or maybe the caregiver is actually sick maybe it's not fun in a vacation oh, but maybe yes. it's to cover them mm. being sick yep we've had uh, plenty of uh, caregivers that we've helped through our programming that um, they use the time that they got to go and have a surgery yeah. done yeah. you know and if they didn't have that time to do mm -hmm. that they wouldn't be able to continue caring for their yeah, loved not necessarily home. not just a break but a backup plan yes exactly mm -hmm, is really what you're talking about so mm -hmm. how much does it cost I mean we I mean it's great to sound like oh yeah somebody's gonna come in I can take take, take mom over to assisted living and yeah I mean, that's not free no no it's it definitely isn't um, it all depends on the level of care that the person needs okay. of course you know it with somebody who is in early stage uh, dementia mm -hmm. you know they may not need that kind of medical care that a nurse would mm -hmm. require so you can mm -hmm. look for those kind of programs that um, that are you know lower on the scale of, of cost okay, okay so okay. tell us a little that. tell us dollars dollars yeah, our, our <laughs> audience here they, say, they don't want to hear about that they want to tell they us wanna, they're you want to hear about dollars yeah, they want to hear about dollars here <laughs> right well the uh, the really the going rate for an hour of respite because it can be a broad is, sure. is about 19 to 20 dollars in the state okay. but okay. again that depends on who you who you decide to go with right and all it right. might be minimums mm -hmm. two hours four hour blocks or right whatever. right okay. exactly all right, all right. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll, the the last important how do we get it paid for question mm -hmm. is is there any programs in the state that operate on a sliding scale basis um, there are programs out there for the sliding scale basis um, it, it it depends on what their uh, you know their parameters are mm -hmm. um, at the Respite Coalition, we do have a voucher program that can help families uh, afford the cost of respite, where we reimburse family caregivers. Oh, wow. Okay, so you go mm -hmm. apply to Tennessee Respite Coalition yes. for that. Yes, correct. Okay, now, I don't think I need it because mm -hmm. my mom's got Medicare, she's got health insurance. Yeah. No? Health insurance, I mean, if you call up a health insurance company and say, I want respite services, they're not going to be able to cover it. They gotcha. don't know. But the trick is, is okay. if there's, you know, if there's home care, if there, you've got some kind of home care coverage, something, you know, your loved one is coming out okay. of the hospital, mm -hmm. 
if that person can care for your loved one during that time, that can be your respite time. Okay, Medicare so in-home benefits. Right, exactly. Gotcha. So, right. Um, so you kind of have to think about it a little creatively because right. respite isn't that, you know, isn't covered by right. insurance. Wow. Yeah, and I think our theme here is think ahead. Don't yes. by thinking about it when mom's home going, now what do we do? Very yeah. true. Back Very from the hospital. True. Yep. All right, Mary Ann, tell us about the veranda. We are a activity-based respite program, short-term, during the day, four hours in Gallatin, and, and we choose the positive approach to care, which means that we, we help our caregivers have respite time, but we also, the person living with dementia, it's respite for them too. So when they're happier, they're happier with their families, and their families are happy, and so it's a win-win. Um, we go to their world, and mm -hmm. so for four hours, they are who they are without family, without anyone there except us to let them be that way. So we go to their world. And um, for the caregivers, that is huge because mm -hmm. they see a happier person when they pick them up. They're not quite so, um, as they say, hard to get along with, <laughs> you know. So yeah. we, we try to make it a fun day. We're a happy place. So is it Disneyland in, uh, it is in Dis Gallatin? It is Disneyland. <laughs> we have a bright, cheery building okay. that uh, we're part of a church, a faith-based mm -hmm. church. And so we have bright yellow walls, green walls. We have fireplaces. And it's their haven. It is the person living with dementia's haven. But it's also very nice for the family when they come in because they're happy. Mm -hmm. They want their loved ones happy. They're happy mm -hmm. when their loved ones are happy. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a great time. We mm -hmm. have a great time. So how much does it cost to come visit the you know, We charge $35 a day, which is the four hours plus we provide lunch. We mm -hmm. also pick up some if they're within the radius of Gallatin that we can pick up. Mm -hmm. We also have kind of a sliding scale. We offer scholarships. So mm -hmm. if you can afford the day one, which would be Tuesday, then you can come Thursday without a cost. And if you cannot pay when I started the veranda, I made a promise to myself that I would not charge. And so there are lots out there that fall in between choices and having money. And so, you know, even at $35 a day, that's 105 a week for three days. Mm -hmm. That's $500 a month. And for mm -hmm. someone's income that's 1200 or 1400 mm -hmm. almost half of their income gotcha. just for yeah. respite. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. we try not to. We have a limited amount but we sure we've made it six and a half years so yes. so you're not brand new no yeah you've been there you've been six, there and, six and, and a half, half years, years. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so for people to become part of a, you know participant for right. your program do they have to be a member of that church no, no? actually okay. we have two that are but for the rest they're just families in Gallatin okay. and Hendersonville and mm -hmm. actually, Goodlettsville. We mm -hmm. have some that come from okay. Goodlettsville. And no, how many nice. people at a time that you we have? We have 15. 15? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have All right, 15. All right, so I'm going to say that the demand outstrips the supply here. It does. And we have volunteers that come. So we have a ratio of one to three, sometimes more than that. So the ratio is great with the volunteers. Right. They're all trained in the positive approach to care. Um, so they understand the disease. It's much easier when you understand the disease uh -huh. to take care of them. And so right. all of our, and they've all been there six and a half years as well and they're all over the age of 65. Okay so are you replicable? We're trying. We have some pending legislation this year um, that oh, will good. allow other churches to operate like we operate and uh -huh. so we're very excited and crossing our fingers that everyone else sees the vision as we do. So why do we need legislation? That's something that doesn't sound like you can just open one of these up and invite people in? And yeah, well, no, no. Yeah, no. Okay. And so um, when we first started, the laws have changed, and that's what caused me to have to do this, is to go and say, okay, you change one law, we need to right. fix it to where churches can do this. They're empty buildings all week long. Mm -hmm. They're a great asset. Yeah. I, bet, I bet you care. have a waiting list. W yeah, yeah, for some days we do. Okay. Some days we do. Some mm -hmm. of those days we do. Mm -hmm. All right. What's the criteria to enroll? You know, we have an assessment form, and so it's a complete assessment form, and the criteria is that you can probably, you need to be able to feed yourself, mm -hmm. um, take care of the other issues, um, but mostly just, you know, be where we can as a volunteer and as a director, take care of your needs there for that four hours. Um, we don't get meds. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. But is there an age limit? Like, what if you have Alzheimer's disease, but you're only 56? Well, we had, we've had two at one time that were 57. Okay. So, so, so you don't have an age game. limit. Right. No. So we're going to put your contact information. So next steps, Jennifer, uh, uh, how do we get started with Tennessee Respite Coalition? Yes, we have an online application on our website, tnrespite.org, and, or you can call our office, 615-269-8687, right. um, and talk to the great staff and uh, see how right. we can help. Jennifer and Marianne, we appreciate you being here today and Thank your you. expertise, the expertise of all of our guests. Thank you for turning in to this edition of Take Us McGinnis Elder Law Hour. Right. Well, stay with us for our next episode.